Hi, my name is Eric Hardy, and this is my entry to the LEGO Ideas Build a Ghost You're Afraid Of contest. Uh, as you can see, this is a Ghostbusters-themed jack-in-the-box titled The Escape of Mr. Tickles. So the way a jack-in-the-box works traditionally is uh, it's got a kind of a combination of two mechanisms. We have a mechanism that will trip a release on the doors, and then a, a character that's held back uh, by the doors, but has um, has kept in tension by by a, by a spring typically. Uh, in this case, uh, I've replicated those same mechanisms using using Lego. So we have to press the character down in and close the doors with the latch. And we've got this little old dial here on the side. And you can twist it for a seemingly indeterminate period of time, just like another Jack in the Box. And eventually it hits the trip and opens up the doors and out pops our character. So uh, one of the things that would be nice to do today would be to remove some of the cosmetic panels here and give everybody an idea of how he works internally. So we'll see if we can break him down on camera here without making too much of a mess. We're going to remove the handle. And let's see, kind of our side panels here. This one's got some of the magic and we'll talk about it in just a second. Um, this side panel here. Forgot to review a feature back here. We've got a cool little light in the back and we'll talk about how that works. Right, so you can see that the way that the character pops up uses kind of a, a scissor lift mechanism. And this is good for getting a lot of height, but then having the mechanism itself collapse down to a a relatively low profile and so getting all of this to fit inside such a small space you can see that uh, using a lift mechanism that compressed down to a uh, to such a small size that worked out in our favor um, especially considering Lego doesn't really have a, uh, a you know large spring like you might see a uh, uh, and an older traditional style jack-in-the-box character depressed with. So you can see kind of how the uh, how the character appears from the inside uh, with the panels off. Oh, I missed a panel there. Pop that off. All right. Okay, all the cosmetic panels off. And you can see here we've got these little latches on either end of the long doors. And they were kind of a bit of a challenge. One, because um, obviously the traditional jack-in-the-boxes only have a single door. And so they would only really need to have one of these. And because I have two doors and they're kind of long and skinny instead of like rectangular rather than single square doors, it's concerned that the tension of the character pushing up on the underneath of the door would ultimately uh, would, it would be too much for a single latch on one end. So I added two latches into, into the doors and, and then have those linked up with little trip mechanisms right here. And when you trip them both simultaneously, then out pops the character. So let's talk about how that happens. How does that get tripped? So built into the side panel, we have a geared mechanism that are that's uh, linked up to these two little actuators and we can call them that why not and when you turn your dial it turns a little tiny gear into a bigger gear 
to give that sensation of, oh, I have to turn it several times before these come up and trip our little trip switches. Now, with an, you know, to, in order to simulate a longer, uh, longer wait time, you could have a smaller gear leading to, uh, or leading to a larger gear, so that it would seem like you were having to spin the dial many more times in order to get the, uh, in order to get the character to, uh, to pop up. Let's see, so while we have that, I can even break him down a step further. Let's see, and. We can get an even closer look at the mechanism. And do a little surgery here. Okay. And then you can see what we've got here are Basically, little lift arms that have cheese slopes attached in order to create a latch with a rubber band you twisted a couple times used to hold tension. And then in the doors themselves, you can see we've got a little groove. I don't know how easy it is to make that out on the camera. A little groove there for the latch to catch in. So to give it just enough tension to stay closed, but then when your trip mechanism uh, is, uh, is caught, then it releases and then the character is able to break through. And let's see, we'll pull Mr. Tickle's body out of the way for a second and give you an idea of how we handled the keeping the character at tension in order to make him pop through in such a startling way. So we got two red rubber bands that are secured and under these panels to, let's see if I can show everybody that without him falling completely apart. And you can see what kind of tension that creates. Oh, and then, and then down he goes. Uh, creating the character itself was uh, it's kind of a challenge. So you kind of you've seen so far in the video the, how little space I'm working with, and, uh, and so getting a character that looked you know believable and you know. And, creepy but was still able to accommodate the uh, the size restrictions inside the ghost trap itself was a challenge um, what we wound up doing was coming up with kind of more of a floating disembodied vertebrae kind of body but it had some you know some ghostbusters esque goofy clown styling with uh, a little squirt flower and some balloon animals all right, well, thanks for joining me. Um, I will go ahead and uh, let you guys go while I uh, put Mr. Tickles back together here. But uh, again, uh, thanks for watching and uh, have a great day.